again. Peabody and Sherman here. Who are we going to visit today, Mr. Peabody? Erstead. Bless you. I did not sneeze, Sherman. I was referring to Hans Christian Erstead, the brilliant Danish physicist and discoverer of electromagnetism. Oh. So if you'll be so kind as to set the way back for the year 1820 and the place Copenhagen, Denmark, we'll be on our way. We entered the way back and were immediately teleported back through time where we soon found ourselves standing in front of the small country home of Hans Erstead. Gee, we didn't pick a very good day to visit, Mr. Peabody. It looks like we're in for quite a storm. An electrical storm, to be exact, Chairman. Come, let's... Quick, gentlemen. Tell me, have you seen him? But I'm afraid we haven't seen anybody. You see, we just got here and we... You don't suppose he went under the house, do you? Well, it's possible, but perhaps if you told us just who... I'll was... have to look under there. We quickly joined Mr. Erstead under the house to see if we could learn the reason for his peculiar actions. Uh, without seeming to pry, sir, may I ask just who it is you are looking for under here? Ye, me. Jimmy? I mean, I mean, uh, Jimmy? Yes, yeah, sure, but he ain't been here. There's only one place left to look. Following him into the house, we watched as he approached a large, overstuffed sofa. So, here you are. Shame on you. Oops, I'm afraid Mr. Erstead has been working too hard, Mr. Peabody. Now he's talking to the sofa. Not to the sofa, Sherman, but to something under the sofa. See? Ah! And unless I miss my guess, that is Jimmy. Yeah, and he miss a bad Jimmy. He hasn't got it in his mouth. He must have buried it. Now I can't fly my kite and make a compass. Huh? Buried what? And what does flying a kite have to do with you making a compass? Just this. By attaching this needle to the tail of a kite and flying it during this electrical storm, lightning would strike it. Thus, it would become magnetized. And being magnetized, it would always point north, due to the magnetic field surrounding the Earth. Yeah, sure. But then Yimi ran off with my kite string, and I've got to find it before the storm is over. Oh, don't worry. I am certain that I can find the exact spot where Jimmy buried the kite string. Follow me. Walking directly to a spot beneath a large tree, I instructed Sherman to dig. In no time at all, he had uncovered two soup bones, a newspaper, a rubber ball, a well-chewed slipper, and, of course, the ball of string. Gee, that's amazing, Mr. Peabody. How did you know that this is where Jimmy buried his stuff? Well, very simple. In order to think what a dog thinks, you must simply think like a dog. And among other things, Sherman, I think like a dog. Sorry, Mr. Peabody, I keep forgetting. Hmm, now would be an excellent time to get on with your discovery, Mr. Erstead. Good. Here I go, <laughs> my hammer. saying, Hans Erstead ran across an open field, but watching the kite instead of where he was going, once more stopped the experiment dead in its tracks. Quickly, Sherman, pull him out. I got him. Are you all right, Mr. Erstead? No. What's the matter? I lost the needle. Come on, I'll help you look for it. Sherman and Hans frantically set about searching through the hay, but of course it was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Uh, you'll never find it that way, Sherman. There's only one quick way to find a needle in a haystack. How's that? By simply sitting down in the hay. Sitting down? Are you sure? Try it and see. Well, okay, but it seems kind of... It's the hard way, I'll admit, but it works every time. Uh, here's the needle, Hans. Too late. I don't need it now. What do you mean? We waited too long. The storm is over. It was true. The sky had cleared and there was no more lightning. Oh, I best just forget the whole thing. Nonsense. It's simply a matter of getting into storm again, and I can do that before you can say cumulus numbers. Returning to the house, we proceeded to raid the Erstead icebox. Finding a fine ham, some leftover chicken, and plenty of pickles and olives, I was soon able to whip up a fine lunch, which we then took into a nearby meadow and prepared to enjoy. I don't get it, Mr. Peabody. I thought you said you were going to make it storm again. I'm doing exactly that right now, Sherman. By eating lunch? When eaten out of doors, it's referred to as a picnic, Sherman. And the best way I know to drum up some foul weather is to have a picnic. There it is now, right on cue. By Yemeni, nothing gonna stop me now. Nothing gonna be. And needless to say, his experiment with electromagnetism was a rousing success. And he lived happily ever after, right, Mr. Peabody? Uh, not quite, Chairman. For just a few months after that eventful day, Hans was repairing a toaster for his mother when, quite by accident, his brother Virgil plugged in the cord to which Hans was holding two bare wires and... <laughs> poor Hans disappeared in a blue flash. How awful! What did his brother say to his mother about that? Well, what could he say, Sherman, but... Look, Mom, no hands.